A dispute between Canada and Saudi Arabia over human rights has quickly deepened, and we could begin to start seeing the impact of this spat. The Saudis have expelled Canada's ambassador, and they've halted everything from investment to educational exchanges and airline flights. CBC's JP Tasker joins me now from Ottawa with the details. JP, the two big components in the Saudi response here are education and business. Let's start yeah. with business. What are you hearing? Yeah, a big, big, big question in all of this is just how detrimental this trade spat is actually going to be to our economy. And we're actually looking at some new numbers here today. And at first glance, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that big of a problem for the Canadian economy. You only do about $3 billion a year in trade, $1.5 billion of goods and services is what we send to Saudi Arabia. They send back about the same. And Canada is only the 20th largest trading partner to Saudi Arabia. So we're not talking about a lot of money here. But it does come at a time, Lindsay, when Saudi Arabia is really changing up how it manages its economy. It's trying to get away from being a petro state. It's trying to diversify all the industries it has in its country. And what they're actually doing is opening the doors to foreign businesses to invest more in that country. And they're also going to be spending more abroad, trying to jumpstart some industries, anything other than oil, basically. So this could really be a problem for Canada if it's actually left out of the equation, if it if it's not one of the countries that's tapped to invest billions of dollars in Saudi Arabia, and already the Canada-Saudi Business Council is coming out today warning billions of dollars could be left on the table, that that $3 billion a year in trade that we do right now could be in jeopardy. So there are some financial impacts to consider with this diplomatic dispute. And it's not just the business that's at stake. There are also thousands of Saudi students studying in Canada. That's in jeopardy. What can you tell us? Yeah, not to make it all about dollars and cents, Lindsay, but a lot of universities and colleges in this country rely on international students to pay big tuitions. They obviously pay more in tuition each year than Canadian students. So a lot of universities are kind of looking at the books today saying, how are you going to handle tens of thousands of Saudi Arabian students going home, not returning next year? So that's one of the questions that we'll have to answer as these tensions mount. Thanks, JP. Thanks. We reached former Foreign Minister Lloyd Axworthy. Now, he believes the Saudi behavior in this dispute is a sign of the times and that Ottawa is in the right to show resolve. I think it is a follow-up or a product of the kind of Trump uh, attitude that you can simply um, have a braggadocio of, uh, and flex your muscles thinking that you can intimidate. Uh, unfortunately, our own Foreign Minister uh, didn't buy into that and has stood up to them. And I think all Canadians need to do that because uh, you know, there is something going on in the world where might makes right is now becoming the new uh, standard for some of these autocratic governments. And I think we've got to push back. David Chatterson served as Canada's ambassador to Saudi Arabia for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. He spent more than two years as Ottawa's envoy to the kingdom, and he joins us now from Kelowna, B.C. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, can you give me a sense of how you are, what do you make of the government's current strategy here? Um, certainly. Um, I mean, this is a significant move by the kingdom and by Mohammed bin Salman, certainly. It's surprising. It's also, I think, quite revealing, uh, both on the Saudi side and on the Canadian side, and it gives us a couple of lessons. What do you think those lessons are? Um, well, uh, I mean, Mohammed bin Salman is a reformer. He uh, not necessarily entirely successful in all areas. Uh, he's also a very, very active um, leader, even though he's crown prince, not king. So he has had foreign policy um, uh, adventures in Yemen, Qatar, uh, with the Lebanese prime minister. He's rounded up elites domestically. This is uh, far more activist than we've seen in Saudi Arabia ever, in fact. Is this really about it's being Canada? Driven by his need. Is this well, really about yes Canada no. or is it a different audience here? I think there's two parts to it. I think he uh, his overriding objective is to reform in a measured way, Saudi uh, economy and Saudi society. He's not interested in emulating any kind of Western multicultural society like Canada. It's being driven by domestic demographic and economic imperatives. So he's forcing change in a very traditional society. 
and getting some backlash and seeking, uh, as all politicians do, be they kings or not, uh, to maintain support. So he's using this opportunity, this disagreement with Canada, uh, as a message to the world to build some support domestically and to forestall, in my view, criticism from other like-minded countries. I'm interested to think what you make of the messages that were sent out by both the United States State Department and the UK today. Reading between the diplomatic speak, it didn't seem to be as though those countries were saying, way to go, Canada, we got your back. Yes. Um, the hard truth here is that the world is not waiting for Canada to preach to them or to criticize them. Um, that's not really what most countries do. Most countries engage in a dialogue. They work in a very strategic manner. They work with like-minded countries. Um, but issuing critical tweets is typically not the best way uh, to build a dialogue. Uh, you know, the second half of that is Saudi Arabia is a G20 country uh, with a growing economy, a very young demographic, and a market that's extremely interesting to countries like the U.S., the U.K., France, South Korea, China, many European countries. They're there to do business, and that's where they see the opportunities. Would you have done this differently as opposed to the, the tweet? Well, in my view, in my humble opinion, the purpose of foreign policy is to advance Canadian interests. Put simply, that's it. That's what we're trying to do. So when I heard about the tweet, I, my question was, well, what, what's our objective here? Was it to, to mitigate the circumstances of Badawi, in which case we failed? Was it to influence the broader direction of, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Again, I don't think we've done that. Uh, have we advanced Canadian interests? Definitely not. So um, my suggestion would have been to approach these kinds of issues in, in a much more professional, much more respectful manner, um, underlying an understanding of uh, our counterpart in, in, in um, the kingdom. I certainly do and appreciate also, your insight. We have to let you go there, Mr. Chatterson. Okay, just one last thing. I think the biggest cost of all of this is the, is the education side. We have an opportunity to influence and encourage change in the kingdom through education. We've been doing that. That's a missed opportunity. Now all Thank those you. students are, are going elsewhere. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Chatterson.